like the ministers so late funny the people uh, the powerful people they started to rule the king based ruling started everything we discuss later on okay so particularly this lesson okay particularly this lesson we are going to be discuss the event okay the training event uh, the ruling type of his uh, kings and kingdoms everything the period is around 1000 
pepper particularly pepper pepper is very most valuable uh, product okay most valuable thing which was brought by these traders these traders means like arab traders like roman traders euro traders they are buying uh, they gave lot of gold to us and they buy pepper okay so that's why pepper is called as black gold okay pepper is called as black gold um, why because uh, the euro countries they started to attack they started to use uh, the spices like pepper uh, cinnamon cardamom and everything to to their day to day uh, food diet okay so for giving you know very well euro continent is the coldest continent um, for protect our body from cold we have to take uh, some more spicy dishes okay, you know very well in time of rainy time uh, we, are, we are willing to eat uh, some more spicy item okay so that creates some more heat in our body like that for the european people they buy they are using pepper to um, generate heat their body okay so that's when they, they they are they are ready to spend lot of money to buy um, pepper right that's why the pepper is called as uh, black gold in, in those countries right so uh, what happened means the traders okay the traders who have come from the european western countries they are carrying they are buying the products of pepper like uh, many things pepper cotton materials um, like uh, some medicinal plant everything they purchase here and they carry the help of uh, sheep Uh, with the help of uh, some caravans, some uh, donkeys and cars, and then uh, they sail their ship uh, in the coastal line with the help of sea. They are taking to their country. Okay, so this is the South India. You know, very well. So this is the South India. Here we have Arabian Sea, right? So here we have Bay of Bengal. So uh, both coastal line. the european traders they are involved in uh, trading activity okay so with the help of this coastal line they are going to their country here we have um, african sorry uh, arab uh, arab countries okay so with the help of uh, uh, the monsoon okay you know very well two monsoon we have okay one is south east monsoon another is uh, north west monsoon so okay of that monsoon wind the traders they are going to their country or they may come to our country for trading purpose right so uh, the monsoon wind is very 
when turning India, in first first who used uh, the silk material, who discovered the technique of making silk means that is Chinese came. So China only discovered the method of making silk came. You know very well how the silk cloth very soft and very um, very uh, shiny came. So all we need to hear the silk um, materials, right? Okay. So how we are getting silk means uh, from the um, uh, cocoon, okay? From the cocoon silk worm, okay? The cocoon of silk worm, from the saliva of the silk worm, uh, that from that one we call as cocoon. So from that one we are we are making silk, okay? We are taking that uh, cocoons and we kept to into the boiling water and we extract the uh, saliva. With the chair, we are making silk. Okay, so this method was, this technique was discovered by the Chinese before seven thousand years before. Okay, before seven thousand years before, uh, before itself, the Chinese people. Okay, the Chinese people, uh, they comes to know the making method of the technique of silk. Okay, so they are kept secret the methodology of making silk. They kept secret for long time. Okay. So they are not uh, described how to make silk. silk uh, that, uh, they are kept very secret manner, right? So, um, so, uh, so they are the monopoly. So they are making silk and they are uh, they are export. Okay, they are export silk to various countries. Okay, with the help of traders, they are selling their silk material to various countries, right? So particularly the Chinese.
Indus mountain range. Okay, Indus mountain range. Okay, from Indus mountain range up to uh, Indus River. Okay, up to Pakistan and present day Punjab, Haryana, uh, up to Delhi, Madura. Uh, the Kushan kings they place uh, important role. Okay, uh, so um, what was the capital of Kushan? Is Peshawar. Okay, what was the capital of Kushan? Is Peshawar. And uh, the second capital of Kushan is Madura. Okay, last class we discussed about Madura. Okay, so uh, these cities are uh, and then Takshila. Takshila is an important city of Kushan. Okay, so that means that Kushan means they gave protection or uh, they support the silk traders. Okay, they support the silk traders and in return they pay tax. Sometimes they pay. That what they is going to sell that crop. Okay. So in later slowly the method of silk making is going to be um, uh, comes to know ma many peoples. Okay. So they are not they are not able to maintain the secret of making silk for long time. Uh, one particular time the method of making silk will leak out. So many people that who involved weaving they started to know how to making silk cloth and uh, they are they started particularly Indian weavers they are they also started to make silk okay so uh, so even nowadays also uh, the silk route was very famous which was used by in those days right so next we are going to be discuss about um, the spread of Buddhism okay you can ask Uh, Buddhism. 
Okay, so um, one of the Buddhist monk, one of the Buddhist person, his name was Ashwagosha. Okay, one of the Buddhist monk or scholar, his name was Ashwagosha. Ashwagosha. So he was a point. He was a Buddhist person working in the uh, Kanishka court. Okay, he wrote the autobiography of uh, Buddha. Okay, autobiography of Buddha. So that name, book name was called as Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra. Buddha Charitra. Okay, so the Buddha Charitra was written by Ashwagosha, who was the uh, poet who wrote the Kanishka, the King Kushana, Kushana King Kanishka. Okay, so in this, in the autobiography comes to know what are the events happened in uh, Buddha's life, right? So, uh, so uh, he, wrote, he wrote in this uh, book, okay, the Buddha Charitra in Sanskrit language, okay, uh, but the local people, the normal people not study very, the normal people, they, they are so uh, Prakrit and Pali language, okay. They spoke Prakrit and Pali language, but the Dasya Kosha he wrote about Buddha in a uh, Sanskrit language. Okay. So, in the same time, uh, one of the new um, branch of Buddhism developed. Okay. So, what branch means? Mahanaya, Mahanaya Buddhism. Mahayana. Mahayana Buddhism was developed in this period only after Ashwagosha, right? And then only that Mahayana Buddhism was famous. What is Mahayana Buddhism? Means two, two, Hinayana Mahayana. Okay, one is, uh, uh, one, one is, um, uh, the people they are not uh, pure anything. Okay, they say who follow Buddhism, they are not pure anything without press. They are such an energy. They are going to meditate. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the methodology of the for, for practice. Okay, so when the Mahayana Buddhism start developed, that time, um, uh, what happened is the, uh, the statue. Okay, uh, in that uh, that Mahayana Buddhism time, they are using nowadays we have Buddha Dhamma many many designs, right? But uh, this Mahayana. Okay, in statue and this they keep some symbols. Okay, so with the symbol only they are using for uh, praying, or praying God. Okay, so uh, they are they are they are interrupting uh, the sculpture that the Buddha is uh, sitting under the tree, that purple tree like that only. Okay, so uh, then then they slowly they started to make Buddha statue, particularly in Madura and Dakshila they are making this various Buddhist statues, right? So the ancient time 
trailers are low. Okay. Uh, because of training purpose, many people they come and go uh, one this place to other place. So with the help of them, uh, the Buddhism was spread many places. Right? So next is the quest of the quest of pilgrims. So when Buddhism was famous in China, uh, Japan, or uh, South um, uh, South Asian countries, many pilgrims they started to come to India. Okay, now nowadays uh, the Muslim pilgrims they are going to uh, Mecca, and Christian pilgrims they are going to Jerusalem, and uh, Hindu pilgrims some people they are going to uh, Ayyappan Temple or uh, uh, Rishikesh. Or Kasi, like that, uh, many pilgrims, like the Buddhist pilgrims, okay, many people they come to India and they visit the place wherever where Buddha was born, where Buddha getting enlightenment, where he gave first speech. So like that, okay. So like that, um, uh, for him, okay, like that, for him was the uh, Chinese pilgrim who came to India around the Ago. Okay, so from here first he came and then uh, next you want swan. You want swan. You want swan. So thousand four hundred years ago he came to India and then uh, Arkham. He came thousand two hundred years before. Okay. So like that many pilgrims they come to India. Okay. So why often all these three people they are coming from China? Why often many Chinese pilgrims come to India means because of the excitement of seeing the uh, Buddhist, the Buddha's birthplace and enlightenment places. Okay. So when they are come to India, it is not easy, quite easy to come into India in those days and return back to their country. Okay. So why they are coming and they return back to their country, they face lot of problem, right? So they face lot of problem. So that even to they are mentioned, they are they are taking account, they are taking their vote, their life history, what are the problems they face during time of uh, coming here. Okay. So with the help of that record, we come to know the life of people those days who lived in the time, uh, what the what king, who ruled, uh, what is the lifestyle of people, everything he comes to know. Okay. So in your book they mention they wrote the wrote of the dangerous encounters on their travel, which often took years, the countries and monasteries that they visit and the book carried back with them. Okay. So one of the uh, one of the interesting information they give in your book page book um, how Fogian returned to uh, China. Okay, so Fogian, so he comes 1600 years before I said. Okay, so when he, when he plans to return back to home, uh, see he when he comes to India, he crossed suppose he crossed Himalayan mountain range and he comes to India. But return he plans to go the sea route uh, to cross. Uh, by a woman and reach uh, China. So in that journey he faced lot of problems that they mentioned an interesting story in a book that you read yourself. Okay. So whenever they return back they are carrying lot of uh, information, lot of manuscripts along with them and they are carrying pure gold Buddha doll. Okay, pure gold Buddha idols and uh, the remains of 